Hello and welcome to today's webinar. One moment while I just get my guests up onto the screen. Shouldn't be too long. There's a few people on here, so I'll just have to look through the list. Cool, that should be working in a second. Hey, Jake, how are you? Hey, bro. Good, good, thank you. Very good. Cool. Um, feel free for the audience to let us know who you are, where you're from, so we know who we're talking to. Hi, Edmund. Um, we'll just wait one moment for Tom to come onto the stage. Cool. Should be up in a second. And he's in the chat there. Hi, Tom. How are you? Hi, how are you? Good. Hi, Ross. Hi, David. Okay, cool. I think we are good to go now. Everyone's coming up onto the audience as well at the moment. Um, cool. Uh, thanks, Tom, for joining us again to uh, do another webinar with us. Our audience found the last webinar really insightful, really informative. So I'm excited for today's chat. Um, so I'll get right into the introduction. My name is Stacey, and if you are new to the Relab webinars, I'm the content manager here at Relab. Today, I also have my co-host, Jake Cameron, one of our sales specialists. And joining us today, we have Tom Panos, real estate coach and trainer, although I'm pretty sure most of you will be familiar with Tom. And today's topic is all about real, uh, real estate prospecting why it's important, how to get started, and if you're already prospecting, how you can take your process and tasks to the next level. Now, if, as we go through the webinar, please feel free to put your questions in the chat and we'll get to as many as we can at the end of the webinar. And this webinar will be recorded. If you need to go back and rewatch it, uh, it will be emailed to everyone watching live and it will also be up on our YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn channels later on today. And we also have the wonderful Lou um, from our team managing the chat today in case there's any general questions or technical issues that may come up. She can help you out with that. Um, so with that said, we'll get right into today's topic. As I mentioned before, we will be talking about all things prospecting. And in our last webinar with Tom, you did allude to the importance of prospecting a little bit, especially this year um, being a slower market compared to last year when many real estate agents were probably just riding the wave of the market. And now this year they've had to really focus on building relationships, putting a prospecting plan into place and to keep that momentum going. Um, with that said, Tom, can you take us through why it's so important for real estate agents to be prospecting? So the death of a real estate agent is the death of the pipeline. It's actually not a law that's specific to real estate. It's actually a universal law in all of sales. And that is that the minute you stop prospecting, your pipeline shrinks. When your pipeline shrinks, opportunities shrink. And then before you know it, when you've sold your listings, you've got no stock. And that's the beginning of beginning to feel anxious. Where am I going to get my next listing? So prospecting to me is the lifeblood of our business. The reason I'm still employed after 35 years in this industry is I tell people to do things they already know they should be doing, but they don't do. And that's prospecting. So prospecting is an interesting subject because there's actually, it's not that scientific. It's not that highly skilled. The value of it is the implementation. Agents struggle implementing prospecting. And the main reason they struggle with it is that they have this fear of rejection. Um, because if you think about it, when you're prospecting, you're gently interrupting people who probably don't want to talk to you. And if you personalize that rejection, you actually then find that, hey, it's getting predictable. Nothing's going to come of it. They don't want me to call them. You don't call them. And then before you know it, you've created this new habit of not chasing, 
Um, so avoiding personalization and learning to make rejection your best friend is probably one of the most important mindsets that you can have in prospecting. But I will just say this, everyone on this webinar right now, please brain tattoo the word 30 day rule in your head. Have it up on your cubicle, in your car, on your screensaver, on your home screen. The 30 day rule is the most important rule in prospecting. What it basically says, what I do in this 30 days affects the next 90 days. So the ability to manage the lag is super critical. Um, because with prospecting, I do things today. So let's assume I'm having conversations with Jake, right? Hey, Jake, it's Tom Panos here from the real estate. I'm just giving you a call to let you know that a property has just been listed in your street. Very similar to yours. I'd love to give you the heads up on what it sells for. That's a call. Nothing comes out of it. <coughs> Four weeks later. Hey, Jake, it's Tom Panos here from the real estate. I'm calling you because I promised I would. That property now has been sold. It's sold for eight fifty, and I just wanted to let you know. Great. Oh, by the way, Jake, how has the changing market impacted your real estate plans? Or Jake, would you like to know what the new value of your home is now that we've got a new reference point in the area? He might say yes, he might say no. He might say, no, it's all good, not thinking of selling now. And then I'll just say, hey, if it's okay with you, if I've ever got any news that's useful, is it okay if I just keep up to date? Yep, no problems. You might be doing this for a whole year and you get nothing for it. <clears throat> and this is where I think a lot of real estate agents struggle. They struggle with delayed gratification. They struggle with the fact that they're gonna do something now and they won't get rewarded for it later, right? It's learning to manage the lag. So I think it's critical. I think agents struggle with it, but I think if you can nail it, it can actually change your real estate life. And I tell you what, if you change your real estate life, you change your whole life. Awesome. Yeah. yeah good, good morning, Tom and, and Stacey and, and the team. Um, and sorry, sorry, Tom, I'll just jump in. Thanks for, for those first few tips. And I think with all of them, there's a really clear call to action which is enabling you to either get back in contact with them or get something in front of them, which is just going to be continuing to build that relationship. Um, and earlier, Tom, you mentioned about the 30 day plan. What or 30 day rule? How, if I'm a brand new agent, how would my first 30 days look ideally? Okay. So you're a brand new real estate agent. The number one thing that you should be doing if you're a brand new real estate agent is to collect data because you won't be able to make calls because you've got no one to call. So what do you do? You door knock. Knock, knock. Hi, it's Tom here from The Real Estate. I know you're not selling and I'm going to be very brief. The reason I've stopped by is our team's doing an appraisal down the road here today. And whilst we're doing that appraisal on a property, I wanted to see how open-minded you'd be for us to flick you a report. You've got to go out and meet people and collect data. You might actually use some other methods. There's a lot of intelligent ways now that you can ethically bribe people to give you data, right? Whether it's a letterbox drop, whether it's some social media hook, right? But step one is to collect data. For my first 30 days, I'd be doing it. But before that, Jake, I would make sure that if I'm a new agent in my first 30 days, I would make 100% sure that I became a product knowledge king. I would become the Google of the market. If you can't beat people, be people on experience, you beat them on product knowledge. There is platforms that you can go online and you can study the market inside out and know exactly what values of properties are. You should be a registered valuer within 30 days and know what's going on. I'd even be walking into other agents' properties that open for inspections, looking at them, sussing out, what are they like inside? I would just try to become BIW, best in the world in product knowledge in that 30 days. 
Uh, that's what I'd be doing, Jay. But, you know, you make a very valid point before. You said whenever you actually make a call, you've got a call to action. Let's be very clear, team. There are three reasons why we prospect. And let's talk about phone prospecting for a moment. You prospect, number one, either to get an appointment. The second reason why we prospect is because we're qualifying the database. We're going through the database to find out, are they hot, medium, cold? Should they even be in the database? I mean, there are so many fat databases out there that need to be qualified. I mean, there are people in databases that are dead, right? So what I'm saying is, I probably would be doing that as part of my activities in my first 30 days, and that is to go into orphan data or the database that the officers got that may have not have been touched for a while and start ringing people up and clean the data. Often the, um, the diamonds are underneath our noses. So, um, so, so reason one we call is to get an appointment. Reason two is to qualify. Reason three is a touch point. It's a frequency touch point and frequency builds trust with people. They're the three main reasons why we prospect and don't have, you know, take the pressure off your team. Sometimes people think they've got a prospect just to sign a listing up. Man, no, we're nurturing. Prospecting is all about nurturing stuff. So one day when they're ready to do business, we're on the shopping list because we've earned the right for it. Make sense? May, awesome. I, may, 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 I give our viewers, may I give our viewers a couple of more tips on prospecting? Team, write this down. What gets scheduled gets done. Schedule it. Schedule it. If you're prepared to make an appointment in your diary to do a listing presentation, if you're prepared to make an appointment to go see a buyer, if you're prepared to make an appointment to show up to your auction, let me tell you, be prepared to make uh, your, your prospecting a non-negotiable appointment. Schedule it. Rule two on prospecting, AMPM. Real estate agents, and I work with some, I work, listen, I probably work with the best real estate agents in Australia and New Zealand. The ones that write all the money are either a one-on-one -on -one client or they're in the real estate gym or I present at their conferences or they're on monthly webinars with me. And I've got to tell you, you get a great helicopter view of the operating rhythm of guys and girls in our industry that are doing more than 100 sales a year or writing more than $2 million a year. And what I noticed about them is this. They've got this AM, PM operating pattern. AM, they're prospecting, they're reaching out, they're looking, business development, higher levels of energy. In the afternoon, they go to their appointments, right? It's got lower levels of energy, you go through the motions, you're going to your appointments. So AM, we find our business, PM, we attend our business. So I think great prospectors schedule it, what would that look like? Probably nine to 11 every day, two hours. Um, and then try and aim to do three appointments in the afternoon. That's a really good operating pattern. A couple of other things that I think you should be very mindful of prospecting is when you call people, you call people with a reason. You call people with a purpose. I'm going to read something out of my Instagram. I posted a video on prospecting the night before last. And someone in the community, let's have a look here. Here we go. Oh, I can't, I can't find exactly the post. The bottom line is the person that commented on my Instagram said, I get called by real estate agents all the time. What's interesting is they're not giving me any information that makes me smarter. They're calling generally to ask things like, I'm calling to check in. Who gets checked in on team? 
people that are on parole, real estate agents don't call people to check in, right? He goes on to further say, and when they do give me some information, I notice that the information is often not relevant to me. They'll talk to me about a home that is in a different area or a home that is at a different price point. What this person is saying is, call me, but surprise me. Give me something I don't know. Give me some information that's going to make me sparta. So what does that mean, team? Become very good at being a value-added provider. Show more, do more, give more. Value, value, value. So what does that look like? Just listed calls on properties that surround that home. If it's all right, what I might do, Jake, can I role play this with you? I'll get you to unmute. Let's do it. So let's Jake, it. Jake let, 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 let's, uh, let's, uh, let's have a, hey to everyone that's coming on, by the way. Good to see you, Nadia, Ray, Jal, Francis, Eugene, Rishi. So I just want to show you a good phone call. You're on my database, Jake. A property has just been listed and I'm gonna give you a call and I'm gonna give you some information and I want everyone to watch the flow of this. Hi, can I speak to Jake? Yes, speaking. Jake, it's Tom Panos here from The Real Estate. Firstly, I wanna let you know, I know you're not selling and I'm gonna be very brief. The reason I'm calling is because Across the road from you, a home has just come onto the market. And I wanted to let you know, very similar to yours, and it would be a very good property to keep an eye on because it's going to give you an idea on what values are doing in this changing market. By the way, Jake, would it be okay for me to call you once it sells to give you the new sale price? Sure, Tom. Oh, I want to want to know what my neighbours are doing. Please let me know. Okay. By the way, Jake, how has the changing market impacted your real estate plans? Look, we were thinking of selling. We recently did our, did our bathroom to get ready to go to market, but we understand the market's dipped a bit now. So I think we're going to hold on for another year or two, let prices bounce back. Yeah, yeah. Well, doesn't sound like a bad idea. One of the things that we offer all our local community is health updates yearly on the value of their asset. That then gives you a baseline of what it's now. So in a year's time, you can see what it's going to be like. Um, I'm in your area all the time because of this property that we've just listed. How open-minded would you be for me to pop in for seven minutes, give you a health update, and um, just leave that with you? Sounds good to me. Yeah, great. I'll give you a buzz maybe uh, Thursday or Friday, and we'll organise a quick pop-in when I'm around. That's it, team. Now, he was being very nice, very complimentary, right? And there. But the bottom line is, I want you to analyze this phone call. Look at what I said. Just look at what I said. Hi, it's Tom Panos here from The Real Estate. And then I said, I know you're not selling and I'm going to be brief. I've just got rid of the two most common excuses people give you on the phone. Oh, I'm not selling. Oh, I'm busy. I've actually brought that up myself. So I eliminate them and then I move straight into them because I said, I'm going to be brief. And then I move straight in and I say, a new property has just been listed. That's the information. Now team, let me tell you what the average real estate agent does when they're prospecting. Hi. Yes. Can I speak to Jake? Yeah, Jake, it's Tom here from the real estate. I'm just calling. Yeah. Just, uh, calling to check in and touch base with you. What's that? What's check in touch base with you? Like what gives you the authority to be checking in on people? And by the way, vendors are not stupid. They can smell the commission breath a mile away. There's no need to be deceptive, right? They know you're calling because you want to see if they want to sell or buy. So team, very important rule. Within five seconds of making the phone call, you've got to use the words because. I'm calling because. And as you're watching this, everyone, let me tell you, the 
three or four most common calls at the moment that you've got to be making are just listed, just sold. Anniversary calls, they're great calls to make. Hey, Stacy, it's Tom Paddos here from The Real Estate. Happy birthday. It is three years since you've moved into your home. Would you like to know the new value of your home? That's what I mean by the anniversary call. But team, there's one very important call you've got to be doing right now. And I call it the November, December, end of year summary calls. Don't forget it. Christmas starts on the 25th of December, not the 25th of November. One of the most important things you've got to do now is not click off. In real estate and prospecting, we have this metaphor acronym called ONFM. October, November, February, March. On FM. They are the four most important months of the year. People are making decisions. So what it means is one of the most important things that you can be doing right now as an on FM agent is picking up the damn phone and calling people. Hi, it's Tom Panos here from The Real Estate. This is the time of year that we give all our vendors an update on what happened in the market in 2022. It's also the time that we give our vendors a forecast on what we think is going to happen in 2023. So here goes. Spend five minutes. Go through your pipeline. It's a touch point. It's qualifying. Some people are going to say, come over. And then some people that are actually thinking of selling are going to say this to you. Yeah, look, um, we're probably we're probably thinking we're going to wait till next year. You know, things haven't been great. This is what I'd be saying. Mr. and Mrs. Vendor, I want to let you know that a lot of our smart vendors now are using a method called pocket listings. What I do is I list your property now, but I don't launch it. I just put it into my top pocket. And if I come across a buyer over the holiday period, because there's no other properties on the market, I can sell yours at a high price. Because if I've got your property in my top pocket, you're on the market in isolation, not in competition. By the end of January, property has a big influx in New Zealand. And that's when you're selling in competition. How open-minded would you be for me to come around and talk to you about our list now launch later strategy that many smart vendors are using? That's what you've got to be doing, team. Right now, you've got to make sure that when you leave for Christmas, that you leave for Christmas and you have your car parked on the top of the hill. What I mean by that is, you park it on the top of the hill, handbrake on, and when you come back in the new year, you let go of the handbrake and you just flow. And you can only do it if you sign up stock before you go on to your break. So I think, you know, they're probably to me the most important calls you've got to be doing at the moment in this market. And please, 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 please understand no one loves prospecting. Of course, I'd rather be doing something else. Of course, I'd rather be putting a sold by sticker up. Of course, I'd rather be celebrating with champagne with buyers that we've just sold a home. But I've got to tell you, if you don't prospect, you won't be getting listing presentations. You don't get listing presentations, you don't get listings. You don't get listings, you don't make sales. It all starts with prospecting. If you don't love it, get used to it. It ain't going away. Any other questions, team? Absolutely. Um, firstly, I haven't heard of that tactic before, and I love the sound of it. Um, we also have quite a big follower of your Instagram page. I, my, one of my favorite things is to look at the comments because they're pretty entertaining. Um, but one of the posts, I don't know if this is a post that you're talking about, but you said um, it's not about the door knocks, about the impact which I really liked. Um, yeah, I thought, can you talk to that a bit more? I think you kind of did briefly, but I think it's a really, really important concept and how can 
Yeah. Yeah. Stacy, it's an interesting one because there's a bunch of real estate agents that are say, that say to themselves, okay, I'm going to go do 30 door knocks today and I'm going to do 30 phone calls. So they basically become like a checklist agent. Tick, I've done it. Tick, I've done it. There's no passion. There's no energy in it, right? You can tell they don't want to be doing it. They're just going through the checklist. That's what I mean. Are you prospecting because you have to, or are you prospecting with impact? Impact is when someone speaks to you, they actually feel an energy field, a bit like wind. You can't see it, but it's there. They can feel it. They can see that you're energized, that you're pumped, you're excited, that you've got a look in your eye that shows that you care. And that's what I mean. But there's just too many real estate agents out there that when they're going out there, the best way to describe it is they have commission breath, right? People can tell they don't care. They're not making an impact. They're just trying to get something out of it. Big tip, Stacey, big tip. Start treating people like students, not like prospects. It changes the game. When you start looking at people as students, you start educating, you start giving information, you're assisting them, you're helping them get better on a subject. When you look at people as prospects, you're trying to flog things to them. So change the way that you look at people. That, that, that's really, really, really insightful, Tom. And I think that education piece is, is so crucial. That, that we we don't see uh, enough of um, and, and sort of continuing on from that a, a really big and common objection that agents get is I'm already working with someone in the area they're the local expert on fine things what's the best way to, to combat that yeah so um, I'd probably say sounds like you don't need a, another real estate agent and then I'd go on to say, but may I ask you, one day when you might need another real estate agent, could I be on your list? You'll be fascinated to see how many people are going to say, yeah, sure. And at that point, what you say is, great. If you give me your email, I'll send you my details and then you've got them on file. And that's the beginning of a permission-based relationship with a person. So they might have another agent they work with. They may not. It might be a shrug off or it might be the truth. The point I'm making is this. If you start being very valuable to that person, you start providing just listed information, just sold. If you're, if, if you're really educating them, all of a sudden they're going to start thinking, why isn't my other agent ever in contact with me, right? And um, so I'd probably say that that's a really good approach to have the door open. But even if that weren't to work with a specific client, I've got great news, everyone. There's thousands and thousands of people. Move on to the next one. You know what I mean? Don't get caught up, right? Like, in fact, I, you know, I've got it in my car. I've got this little plaque. It says next, N-E-X-T. Something happens bad, next, move on, next person, right? More people, more conversations equals more listings. End of story. Any other questions, team? Yeah. Um, look, just a, this one is just a, a quick one, and I've actually got something I want to I wanna show you, Tom. So just quickly before I do that, I want to know if you could have a tool that would help give you that insight easily, that would be beneficial to you and your clients? Yeah, like you, you, we'll give you what information, just to elaborate, to, to tell me more. Yeah, any information on a particular area. So any listings that happen in the area, sales in the area, uh, building consent information in the area, changes to different properties. 100%, 100%. Anything. You, know, yeah. you want to, you want to, you, if, 
if we if we're going to look at people as being students like i said and we're going to start providing information you've actually got to become google of your marketplace you've got to know everything inside out so what does that mean study get product knowledge so if you've got product knowledge if you've got product knowledge from a source man <laughs> that's gold absolutely yeah awesome Okay, well, look, I'm just going to um, quickly share share my screen here, and uh, this is something our, our team's been working on. Um, Stacey, if you can just just let me know if that sheen's screen share is coming through, all good. And um, most people in the audience wouldn't have wouldn't have seen this either, um, so it's so a bit of a first here. Awesome, yeah, is that coming through, Stacey? Yeah, cool. Yeah, um, that's so great. the purpose of this is you can search a street a street or a suburb or an area and we're going to tell you all sorts of bits of different information about it um the other way you can do it is you can come and search through your map view um so we're going to come to a suburb here ponsonby quite quite a nice suburb in central auckland um and we see here right down by the waterfront close to the harbour bridge we can switch over to our satellite imagery there and get a nice good overview of what's happening nearby um and for the purpose of this i'm going to switch back to our, our map view here and what we can do, if, if we want to prospect, let's say, three streets, this week I'm going to do three streets in Ponsonby, Herm Bay, around Central Auckland. What we can do, we can actually draw a, a selection around the three streets or the area that we want to prospect. And we can do whatever shape we want. And what we're going to do, we're going to come down and we're going to go search. And this is going to pull all the addresses from within that area that we've selected. If you want to, you can do the whole of Auckland and capture all of it there. Um, and we see here 256 results. Um, and what we've got, we've got some basic information about the properties, obviously their address, size, ownership, things like that. We can come to our list view as well. We see some of them are currently on the market and some have recently been withdrawn, either withdrawn sold or withdrawn not sold. Uh, and then on the left here, Tom, this is where we're really trying to nail down different strategies and help agents become the expert and give them that next sort of step up of, of information. And what we've got, is we've got a whole range of different filters you can use to help determine what your exact strategy is going to be. Uh, so what we can do, we can go by consent. What properties have development related or renovation related consent? We know people do work to their properties before going to market. We can go by land, title different zoning types, size, stormwater, wastewater connections, things like that. Any property details, bedrooms, bathrooms, cladding, pools, driveways, CV information, floor area, all that general stuff. And then we can come down and we can go by listing. So what properties are currently for sale on the market? What ones are for rent? We might exclude the ones for rent, depending on your strategy. And how recently were they listed? Were they listed within the last week? Were they listed within the last 90 days or even longer? Because those listings might be, uh, vendors might be getting fed up with their current agent, ready to move, move on to someone else. Uh, and then lastly, we can come down by ownership. When you're in New Zealand, the average home ownership lifespan is about seven years, average turnover. Um, so what we could do, we could go two years either side of that. So what properties have been owned for between five and nine years? Because these people are either side of that sweet spot of, um, potentially ready to go to market. We can come down here, what ones are owned by individuals? And then lastly, what properties out of these, note we've gone from 256, I believe, down to 38 results. What out of these properties have no mortgage interests attached to the title? 13 results. So we see our list narrowed down to 13 results. And of that, we know for certain these people have owned their property for between five to nine years, and they've got no mortgage interest attached to their title of this property. So they're potentially in a, in a good position to buy or to, to cash up, sell up, whatever. Um, and from there, what we can do, we can select these 13, we can go add to our list, and what we're gonna do, we're gonna go Tom's Ponsonby list. And here we can go toggle notifications on. And what this is going to do is when we create this list with notifications on, anytime there's a listing, 
a consent approval or submission for any of those properties on that list. There's a change in ownership. Any small details, we're going to notify you and let you know. And so we create that list. We come to our, our watch list and we see here Tom Sponsonby list. Nice and easy. Um, so what I, I really want to know, Tom, is a tool like that, I'm going to bring down the screen share, a tool like that, is that, is that useful information or can you get that yeah. elsewhere or having it at your fingertips is? It is, it is. I'll just, um, you know, that's the first time I've seen it, right? And um, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tool that um, if you're using, uh, what I would suggest to everyone, and I have, I have real estate agents that do this in Australia, uh, with other products, right? What they do is they have two screens open. One screen is their CRM system, right? And then one screen is they've got data or information like what you've just displayed. So um, what happens is they then are usually often just having their AirPods in so they're not holding a phone, right? And they're just sitting away and they just get into this operating rhythm and it gives you this sense of, you're speaking from a position of strength because when you're talking to people, what did we say that my Instagram comment came from the public? They said, I want to be surprised. I want to be given information that I'm not aware of, right? So you've got it there, you know. They're not to know. They're not to know that you've got this second screen opened up there, that you're seeing it. So that's how, um, that's how I'd be, you know, using it. And I'm just having a look at some of the people making comments there suggesting they want to have a they want to have a go and um and trial it you know that's what ross is saying um so <coughs> yeah but please remember team that tool doesn't make the calls you still need to make the calls yourself if you're thinking to yourself oh great you know i've got this you know my prospecting is going to be easy you still have to make the calls it's no difference to doing sit-ups you can't outsource the sit-ups You've got to do the sit-ups yourself, right? Um, but um, yeah, and I think I think right now, right now is probably the greatest time, greatest time on the planet for you to be getting in front of people because people are confused. There's a changing market. They're hearing interest rate rises. They're hearing inflation, war, Ukraine, Russia. You've got an election there next year. They're trying to work out what's going on. Be the thought leader in your market, right? Be seen as the educator in your market. And please, please, please always remember, always remember that when you're prospecting, have the list of people that you're going to be approaching before you start prospecting. Because sometimes you can get overwhelmed because you say, oh, I'm going to, Example, I said to a guy the other day, do 10 calls before 10 a.m. At 11 o'clock, I asked him, how'd you go? He said, I did one. I said, why is that? He goes, I seem to have spent most of the time trying to work out who I was going to call. I was looking up names. I said, rule number one, powerful list equal powerful results. Don't ever forget it. Have a list of people already articulated on who you're going to be contacting. But I might get you guys to, um, Stacey and Jake, I might get you, there's a few people there asking a few questions, yeah. or Linda was anyway, yeah. Yeah, there's a good question here. Um, have She's realised people are not comfortable with sharing phone numbers when whilst door knocking. That was one of those. What, Sorry, that was one of those, yeah. Yeah, what's yeah, a good script to get that? Listen, if you can't get a phone number, just casually ask for an email because emails are something that are more likely to be given to you than a mobile, right? Then earn the right from there, right? And if they don't want to give you either, move on. Don't be pushy. I mean, that's why they hate real estate people because you're not reading the play, you know? Um, I'll get you to go through any of the other comments or questions too. Linda's asking when it will be available. Um, yeah, look, Linda, we will we'll reach out to you and let you know. Um, by the end of this year, that this, this tool is going to be available and, um, and ready to, to roll out. So just putting the finishing touches on it now, um, and then it's going to be available. 
too. I have um, I have another question for you, Tom. If the, there might be agents out there thinking of I've I'm quite well set up. I've got my processes. They're still getting um, people get in touch with them. What's your advice for encouraging people to prospect, even though they think they might not have to? So, when I've analysed real estate gym members, which is my training platform, and I look at my real estate gym plus members, and I get into conversations with them. I come up with an interesting statistic and that is these are people that are the elite. We're not talking about people that are new or, or in growth phase. These are people that are doing over a hundred sales a year, writing over $2 million in gross commission. They indicate that they get about 70% of their business coming to them through attraction, attract it, and they're getting 30% where they're reaching out. So if you're the sort of person that is saying, hey, I'm getting all this work come to me, just understand you're leaving money on the table because the best models have got a combination of reaching out and attract. 70-30 appears to be the number. So if all your business is just coming in, you're simply not reaching out to as many people as what you should be. And that's fine. Because if you're happy making the money that you're making, listen, there's no dramas. But if you want to make more, you're going to have to prioritise prospecting, business development, reaching out in 2023. Yeah. And another good question. How, how do you see attending events within your area being important? Fundraisers, markets? What are your thoughts on that? Well, the community agent is normally the best agent. It's the agent that brings the community together, becomes the eco center of the community. They're the best agents, right? Because they look like they're giving back to their community. People know us in real estate as always taking away, taking commissions and buying nice cars, buying nice homes, having nice holidays. Good real estate agents are seen giving back to the community whether it's a fundraiser, whether it's a sponsorship of a soccer club, a rugby club, whether it's attending their markets, whether it's putting on a movie VIP night, whatever it is, raising money for a charity, be seen as being a community-based agent. It's not a cost, it's an investment and it'll make you feel good anyway. So um, I think every person should have at least one organization. They become an ambassador, and um, they support it, could be the rugby club. They're there giving trophies out. They're there on the sidelines. They're there on presentation nights. I've got to tell you, you're tapping into a whole community. These kids have got parents. These parents have got houses. At some point, they need a real estate agent. If you're there visible, you're on the shopping list. So 100%. To Francis, who wrote that question, one hundred percent. Harry's just asked a question: when you're when you are doing prospecting calls after introducing yourself, do you say how are you, or directly say the reason I'm calling? Yeah, I don't think you say how are you. I don't think you say how are you. I think I think I think a random agent calling someone asking them how they are is not the best use of time. I think it's a lot better saying. Hey, Harry, it's Tom Panos here from The Real Estate. I know you're not selling right now. I'm going to be very brief. Here's the reason I'm calling. Bang, straight into it. Yeah, um, like cool. So I know we're, we're sort of almost almost out of time, but I was wondering what's one thing that everyone on this call can do tomorrow or this afternoon to get a kickstart on, on their prospecting? Um. Set a, set, a, set, a, set a target of minimum call connections per week. So turn around and say, I'm setting a goal. I'm going to do a minimum of 20 a day. That's 100 a week. We've now got, let's look at my diary, 17th of November. <laughs> We've got about four weeks. 
My goal is to do 400 connections in those four weeks. That would be it. And then step number two, just start. 80% of winning is just beginning. Get that first domino down. Once you get the first domino down, you're in the game. That's what I do. Awesome. That's a great tip to finish us off. Well, um, thank you so much, Tom, for joining us. I think everyone found that very, very insightful. And yeah, I think all the agents on here can can go away and act, actually put that into practice now, which is awesome. Cool. Um, thanks, Jake, for co-hosting. And yeah, thanks for everyone attending today. Thanks a lot. Signing off. Kia ora. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone.